and I tripped bringing him the coffee and <laughs> waste coffee on Martin Lawrence white sneakers. Oh, no, no. You Everybody went, <gasps>
I didn't feel they were, they had 45 minutes. Let me say it right. like this. They, I didn't feel they had 45 minutes of solid material. Right. And what I don't like as a comedian and as a host and as a producer of shows, I don't like comics to ramble on stage when it's a real show you know right. people have paid their money to come right. see a solid show i don't like comics who get up and their whole thing is talking to the audience right you know, i don't want nobody insulting the audience or making mm -hmm. jokes at the audience because they didn't come they didn't pay to come to be insulted you know they right. came to hear jokes yeah. And so I was the biggest bitch in town. <laughs> uh, everybody, <laughs> they they fucking hated me, Charles. I, I they couldn't. First of all, they couldn't believe that I had booked that room at the Hollywood Park Casino in Inglewood. And yeah. then they couldn't believe that I had the whole second floor. The uh, casino had done signage for me. I mean, it was the best deal that any comic could have imagined. And nobody could believe that I did it. And I Made even tried to, yep. <laughs> and I tried to bring other people in on it with me and they didn't want to do the work. And so right. I just did my, I drafted my own little proposal and did all this stuff and um, took it over there. And they were like, oh, you can do this? I said, yes, sir. And, you know, at that time I was in my early 20s. I looked like I was about 15. They was looking at me like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and uh, it it didn't last long. They, they, I had people from New York and everywhere trying to sue me, saying sue, they wow. own they owned the logo, the stop sign, and they had trademarked and patented the stop sign. And that was my my name was Patricia Tone presents the comedy stop, and it was a stop sign. And they were trying to sue me for the stop sign. I'm like, you motherfuckers wasn't even born when that man created the stop sign. Right. So exactly. how are y'all trademarking the stop sign? Right. <laughs> Dude, you talk about stress. And so the people got scared and then they gave the show to... Uh, I, don't, I think Cat Williams or some other comic, and uh, I was asked out. But that's ho Hollywood history, right there. That's right, baby. And <laughs> little do they know when when it happened, all the stress left my body, and I was like, "Whoa, Lord, <laughs> I don't have to deal with them heathens anymore." You know, I've been but, there. I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's a it's a rough thing being a female, being a comic. Pe yeah, you mm -hmm. know, people just don't understand the stress. And then when you're creative, and then mm -hmm. everybody want to steal your juice. You know, right? Mm -hmm. They you want everybody wants to want a piece of your energy. You know, like they want that energy. They want to be close to or, that energy, or they want to kill your energy so yeah. they don't look lazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, tell us, tell the people how you started your adventures with Bounce TV. I want to hear about that. That was like uh, with Bounce TV. Shout out to uh, Bentley, Kyle Evans, first of all. Shout out yeah. to Omar Gooding. Um, yeah. That started, that journey started in 2005, actually, like my second or third year here in Los Angeles. Um, I was blessed enough to uh, work on an independent film with Omar Gooding called The Candy Shop. Um, Alton Glass directed it, Alton, and uh, I want to say Courtney Triggs produced it, and uh, I'm not sure who else, I've, I've, so it was so long ago, but um, it, it went really well, and then what ended up happening is me and Omar clicked because we both are Libras and our birthdays are cl uh, close together, so comedically and creatively, me and Omar Gooding kind of have this yin and yang, like Muhammad Ali and Bundini Brown, like we kind of bounce <laughs> off each other really well. And yeah. he, he picked it up and I picked it up. 
and we we stayed in touch. Like he did a couple of albums, and I would do like little comedy skits on his albums, and and wow. we just kind of stayed in touch. And then you yeah. know, fast fast forward thirteen years, because you know in Hollywood they say it's an overnight success, but you know, yeah. thirteen years was like a long you know, time. <laughs> I, I, I seen some things. I went through some things, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Omar got picked up by uh, by Bentley uh, uh, Harvard Studios to do Family Time, and he I randomly called him one night because I used to just do prank calls just to keep him on his toes. I randomly called him and he answered the phone, but I was just gonna leave a message and prank call him. And he uh, said, "Hey man, uh, come to the studio. I want you to come check out the show I'm working on." And four, five, six seasons later, I'm on like on the writing staff and you know, acting here and there on the show. Wow. And that ended up, uh, that I fast forwarded through a lot of scenes in this movie. Like I went from the good yeah. part to the good part, but in between yeah. that, like, don't think I didn't die and come back three or four times. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm very fortunate and blessed that I was able to, to persevere. And uh, I'm very fortunate and blessed that I was just able to um, maintain through the whole process. So mm -hmm. I don't, I definitely don't take any of it as something that was granted to me or that it was given to me or that it was owed to me because it wasn't owed to me. So I'm, I'm just really grateful to them for giving me a chance. And I'm just grateful just to be in the right place at the right time and to be blessed with the opportunity. But that's that's how it came about is through Omar and Bentley Kyle Evans. You know, they believed in me. They gave me a chance. And, you know, out of thousands of people that could have got that opportunity, you know, I the perseverance paid off, you know? Yeah. And, and b before I say anything else, I just want to let everybody know y'all still got time. Y'all have time. <laughs> you have yeah. time. We, we, it counts. Your vote matters. Your vote matters. Yeah. If you're watching yeah. this, you got time. Your vote matters. Hold your weight. That's my yeah. homie. That's my homie, Kevin. Shout out. That's his clothing line. Hold your weight. That's what he stands for. That's what we're doing in 2020. Hold your weight. We got time. Yeah. I'm not going to tell y'all what to do and how to do it, but it's people that sacrifice. Just do it. So you can do yeah. this. A lot of people sacrifice. Like, they sacrifice their life. You know, you might sacrifice your check or you might your car. You might lose. People lost their life so, so you could wear this sticker. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great story. But I also want to go back to Bentley Kyle Evans and... Uh, mm -hmm. His sister Stacy, yeah, believe it or not, amazing. yeah, when they were doing Love That Girl with yeah. Tatiana Ali, I was yeah. an intern for that show. Oh, wow. And I got to meet them, and Stacy brought me on. We met through Facebook, and they were just absolutely wonderful people. Stacy is an uh, amazing human being, yes. Yes, she is. Yes, yes she is. And um, I got to meet Martin Lawrence. That's where he came onto the set one day. Oh, my Lord, let me make you laugh. I am usually this cool, calm chick, and um, Martin wanted some coffee. And so I get nervous when other people get nervous a little. You know, I wasn't as nervous as they were because, you know, Martin's on set. He's the executive producer. Yeah. He's walking around. And everybody, You know how everybody lose their head and they they they're doing all this stuff and they was like, Patricia, bring him some coffee. So I'm going to get some coffee. And <laughs> I tripped bringing him the coffee and waste <laughs> coffee on Martin Lawrence white speakers. Oh, no. No, you didn't. <laughs> Dude, have you ever had your life flash before your eyes? <laughs> oh my goodness. You can hear it. This would have been a great sound effect for a movie. Everybody went, oh, you know, that gas. <laughs> that big ass gas. And I felt like the dorkiest, <laughs> the dorkiest black person ever. I mean, Don't I worry about it. Felt, felt micro just small. And so here's the beauty though. Here's the beauty of it. Martin looked down. He saw apparently it didn't get too much on his <laughs> shoes as I initially thought. So he looked down and looked up. He's like, oh, it's okay. And 
If I tell you, I ain't never wanted to hug somebody more than I wanted to hug him right then. Because he was like, you know, it's okay. He he didn't trip. He didn't say, get this bitch off my set. You know, he didn't, he didn't lose his cool. He looked down or whatever. And he was like, okay, y'all. Some, I, you know, I just went and got a towel. I was like, okay, I'm going to get a towel. You know, he, he, it didn't phase him at all. Martin was like, I got a hundred more pair of shoes like this at home. (laughs) But still, you know that celebrity, some of these people, their egos are just astronomical. And Martin Lawrence, let me tell y'all, America is the coolest dude in Hollywood. Very hard. Martin Lawrence, shout out to you, baby. I love you. But yeah. Amazing dude. So yeah, it's amazing. You can't get better than that. No. That's yeah. Right. He's a legend. No one will ever do hosting a show like he did for Deaf Comedy Jam. They yeah. all tried. No one could measure up to Martin mm-hmm. Lawrence. He is one in a million. That's right. Everything and he touched. I was just about to say, everything he does. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I I love Martin Lawrence. I even uh, got a few times to go to his set on the Martin show. They'll never oh, wow. know, know this, but I had friends who had children in one of the Christmas episodes and she brought me to the set and I got to walk all around the set and everything. I was real quiet. You know, I didn't know anybody, but I got to see all of them up front, up close. I got to see them do the scenes and the acting. I was just mine. I was like, oh my God, what would it be so wonderful to work in your craft? You know, I was just admiring everybody they were all so nice and professional. I'll never forget that. They, right. they were on their stuff, you know. Yeah. It, it was just unbelievable. It was absolutely phenomenal. And I'll never forget that experience either. So this is so weird how we subliminally have linked up through some of the same people and it's just crazy how life works you know Mm -hmm. Um, so you know tell us about what you're doing now I see you've been posting some of the uh, comedy shows you've been going on so how how is stand-up comedy now in this pandemic um it definitely slowed down, you know, since March, since the uh, whole yeah. pandemic started. It's the the shows, not no shows in L.A. Really, they have a couple shows where they might do something on a patio or they might do something on a on a rooftop. Um, every once in a while, you'll catch an open mic um, here and there. But for the most part, stand up comedy for me has been on the road. You know, I, I went back to Texas a couple of times and went out to Arizona a couple of times, but it's like, it's really hit or miss. And yeah. I think as entertainers, kind of like what we are doing right now, it's up to us to stay busy and stay motivated and stay creative during this time because the opportunities are slow, but it's also a transition. So like they say, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. This is almost like a reset. We're hitting the reset yeah. button for a lot of people. Yeah. If, if we stay consistent during this time, we're putting ourselves in a position where you got all this stuff, like you might have 30 episodes of your show on deck and I might have 10 scripts or whatever it is. We just have to stay busy. And I know for me, like no matter where I'm at or what I'm doing, I'm not waiting on somebody else to make me work. I'm going to work because I wake up and and I have time and I have energy and I have my health and I'm, I'm blessed to work. So I'm going to take advantage of that blessing. So it's been slow, but I've been busy. I've been keeping myself busy. And I have had a couple of um, pilots come across my, you know, uh, different people want stuff written and stuff like that. But uh, nice. as, yeah. as for actively doing things, it's all stuff that I'm doing through my production company by myself. And, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. We are all waiting to see what's going to happen next. And um, yeah. I'm optimistic. I'm always going to be optimistic. And if, if nothing else I know, I'm doing as much as possible with the time and the and the health that I have, you know. Yes, yes. And see, that's ac- actually so accurate for me because 
I'm laying there and I'm like, God was like, uh, when are you going to get your, roll your big butt out this bed and do something? <laughs> You've just been laying here eating and sleeping and binge watching. And I said, okay, you sure picked a good time for me to be the fattest I've ever been to be on camera. <laughs> yeah. But let me tell you something, people like you, and all my other guests and friends have, they jumped up to the plate. And let me tell you, I've been so teary-eyed every time somebody says, yeah, I got you, I'll do it. You can count me in. And then I get the responses and the replies back in, in my uh, messages from them saying, Oh my God, Patricia, that was great. This looks as good as some of the TV stuff I've seen. Or, you know, dang, you really got something here. And I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. that is some great feedback, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, thank you again. I've noticed that a lot of comedians have been doing the Zoom comedy shows. Have you participated in any of the Zoom comedy shows? I haven't had time to look and check one out. Um, I, I did, uh, are you familiar with Quake's House? Earthquake has a, a, a show on Sirius XM. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I do, yeah. Um, um, I regularly do that, uh, Quake's House, which is always, I can't say enough about Earthquake, like, that dude, he he's a legend for real, and that's like I just being able to to work around him and and see how he been yes. in the game so long and yes, I don't know. He just earthquake is if, if you look up comedy in a dictionary, earthquake gonna be in there somewhere, man. Yeah, that dude, yeah, yeah. That, that's my big bro right there. Yeah, but that's his about head gonna be up. To his, <laughs> you said what? Be, his head gonna be sticking up over Eddie Murphy and Martin and all of them, like, hey, I'm here too. Yeah, I'm telling you. And uh, look, when any comedian see Earthquake, <laughs> any legend see Earthquake, they gonna give him props because they know Earthquake, yes. like, he the man. Like, that's just it. That boy Quake is man. ferociously funny. Yes. I do, I, he, <laughs> he has this um, video on YouTube. I can't think of the one, the name. Oh, I'm so I'm sorry, Earthquake. Oh, yeah. I watched that video at work, <laughs> at lunch, to de uh, stress myself yeah. <laughs> for a month straight. Let me tell you. And people were like, "What the hell are you watching?" I mean, I watch. I would just be crying watching yeah. Earthquake in that stand-up thing. You might make me watch that today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, that's awesome! I didn't know you worked with Earthquake on that show. Now I'm gonna have to check that out. Add that. Yeah, to you should. Um, if you if you know him too, like you should become a guest on the show. Let him know. You know. See about, I don't pitting, know. you know, you're an entertainer too, so why not? No, I don't know. I'm, I'm not famous enough to be going down that road, but I'll just watch. Only from because you said that. You said that. Nobody yeah. else did. Yeah. I, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. But, um, okay, well, we're going to jump into this. I want to first ask you, what is the best advice that you've ever given someone? Don't quit. That's the best advice. Like comedians and uh, entertainers, um, yeah. I, I get asked a lot by people that start doing comedy or entertainment or writing. I always get asked that question, like, what's the most important thing to being being successful or or making it or whatever you whatever you call it and that was something that was told to me when I first got off the, when I first got to Hollywood, um, I, I met Jamie Foxx. Um, and I, you know, I was just a young comedian and, um, yeah. I asked him the same question. He said, uh, Jamie said, um, he said, don't quit. Uh, Hollywood is the entertainment industry. Anything that's worth having, there's things that's going to make you want to quit. It's designed to make you want to quit. That's why it's so special when you make it. Uh, relationships, yeah. finances, uh, uh, family, um, I don't know, uh, health, uh, depression, all the things that humans go through, these are things mm -hmm. that stop people from seeing the vision that they had when they started 
the same as they did. Like it changes your vision. Like I came in thinking I want to be this. I want to do it like this. And I want to have this by that date. And four or five years go by, four or five situations go by. And somehow all that got cloudy and we no longer see that vision. And something that always drove me was don't quit. And yeah. if if I could tell you, um, I have a, like, I remember certain points, like bullet points in my life. Um, mm-hmm. I met, um, do you know who David Robinson is? No. Uh, he's a, a basketball player, he's an NBA player. And I met him okay. when, I was, when I was 16 years old, I met David Robinson. And he didn't necessarily give me advice, but I was being real over the top. I was being really aggressive. And I, I was being, I was getting too far ahead of myself. Like I wanted his autograph real bad. And I'm yeah. jumping all over everybody, knocking people popcorn out their hand, <laughs> knocking people beer. I'm trying to get to David Robinson because he like he was the man back then, him and Akeem Olajuwon. So Yeah, I know Akeem. Yeah. So I finally get to David Robinson and he saw how I was acting and he was just looking like shaking his head. But he knew like if I don't get this dude this <laughs> autograph, I'm gonna have to fight him. So <laughs> he gave me the autograph and he wrote a Bible verse at the bottom of it, Matthew 6:33. And I was like, oh, thank you, thank you. I'm going crazy. I'm spinning in circles. I'm like the Tasmanian devil. He said, yeah, he said, he said, if you don't do nothing else, read that. So I read it. And you know what Matthew 6 and 33 says. It was basically saying sometimes we put the carriage before the horse. You from Texas, so you know what that means. Sometimes yes. we want the, the reward of something. We want the payoff. We want the big autograph from David Robinson but we're not willing to go through the patience and, and, yeah. and the proper channels and the packing order and the respect yeah. and the self-control and all the things that it takes to get there, the discipline. And that's what yeah. I took from that. And for the longest time, I would have that Bible verse on my screensaver. When I was in school, yeah. I had it on the wall, but it just followed me throughout life. And it was always that thing that, that, it was a a silent reminder to check myself to say like, who, who do I think I am that I get to cut in line? Who do I think I am that I get to have a blessing that you prayed for, that you put the work in for, that you made all the sacrifices for, and I don't have Mm -hmm. to go through what you went through and I deserve the same thing. Who, who do I think I am? And a lot of times we do that as human beings, we see, the, the payoff, but we don't see everything that a person went through to get through it. And that's what yes. that verse always kind of spoke to me. Like, Hey man, humble yourself, check yourself. If you really want it, you might get it, but you're going to get what you deserve, but you're going to have to go through some stuff first. You can't cut in line. And that was a, that was a powerful bit of advice. And of course, don't quit. Those two yeah. things is like, that's my steering wheel. That's my navigational system. Right. That lesson is one that, I, as you were telling it, I vividly could see some things that were relatable in my life because when I did stand up comedy and even when I had the comedy show and, you know, all these people were attacking me and and trying to steal my joy and steal my show, steal my jokes, steal everything. And I'm, I would go home and would be sitting, you know, you know, t- with tears running down my face because I, I said the same thing you just said. They don't understand how hard I've worked to do this, to get to this. You, you know, I hate when people just think they could come and infringe on someone else's creativities, mm-hmm. cre- you know, their 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 way of thinking you don't know how hard i have worked to come up with this joke to come up with these ideas to figure out a way to make them work you know yeah. and other people just think they could just finagle their way in uh easy go lucky and take yep. your stuff that's right and it drives me crazy it's, it's this is not perfect i got two different cameras with two different compressed images but guess what i put it all together that's and make right. it this show called that's ask right. on trisha that's right and it's not easy because that's i'm right. doing it all by myself right and shout out to you and all the entrepreneurs and all the queens that's out there doing their thing and going against the grain. 
what, whatever, whatever your business is, if you encouraged enough to start, I send you more encouragement to keep going because we know what it takes to keep going. We know what it takes yeah. to keep going during a pandemic. Um, yes. There's people that want to keep going, but they don't know how to get started or what's the next step or what to do next because nobody knew what was going to happen in the world. So what little encouragement I have, I send that out to you and anybody Thank else that's you. like you, whether you're small business or you're selling stuff on the Internet or you selling. Keep yeah. doing it. Like you said, your situation Thank ain't you. perfect. Your setup ain't perfect, but it's perfect in its own way. And it's perfect yes. in a way that you're going to be blessed to go to another level because you took the step and you went against the grain and you put yourself yes. out there. That's all it is. And a lot yeah. of times we think that we have to be perfect or it has to be the perfect right. time right. or the perfect amount of money. Yeah. None of that. The perfect, the most perfect thing you can do is start. Yeah. And, and then once you no, start, don't quit. Yeah. And then there's no such thing as perfection. So that, that fantasy world that we live in, in our head where it has to be perfect, it, it's never going to happen. That's right. Ever. Thank you again for that. I really appreciate that. That meant more to me than you'll realize. So now I'm going to flip the script and ask, what's the best advice you've ever received besides the one we just heard about? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked me this because there was a, um, my stepmom who kind of like, she had a lot to do with my upbringing, like my childhood. She had a big influence on, on raising me. Um, mm -hmm. she passed away in 2011 and I was like, that was a, like wow. a fork in the road in my life. Like that was, cause she was so important to me other than my daddy that passed away. She was one of the most, uh, influential people in my life up until that point. And when she passed away, I was like really lost. And, um, you know, being out here in California, not really having family, kind of being by myself pretty much 99% of the time, other than, yeah. you know, friends that I've known since I've been here. But for the most part, I'm, I'm by myself. Um, I was, I was in a dark place, like kind of like, how do I keep going? And I met this, this uh, older brother. He probably had to be like, at the time, like maybe late 60s, 70s. And we was, he was taking us to a set. We was shoot, filming a movie and um, he was p driving us to the set. And I don't know how we got on the subject, but he said, no matter what happens, and you can challenge this right now, I, I, I guarantee you, I'll be able to tell you, make it work. He said, no matter what happens in this world, you can always find something good or positive. Yeah. No matter what happens. I was talking to one of my friends and I told him that and he he challenged it and he threw out uh I think he said uh murder or something like that. And I think I told the guy the same thing. I said, "What about when people get killed? Innocent people get killed." He said, "Those innocent people did get to enjoy life at some point." And I was like, "Wow, you're right." And then I said something else. Uh whatever basically whatever you go through, there's some good that could be seen in it. Well, um, I lost, um, I lost my paycheck. Okay. Well, you still have a job. Um, yeah. Half yeah, my I money see. got stolen. Well, half of yeah. it didn't, you know what I mean? And it's, it's yeah. a switch that goes on in our brain where if, if, if you're in a relationship with somebody and they got a bunch of messed up stuff about them and then they have a bunch right. of good stuff about them, what are you going to focus on? Yeah. yeah. If, if, if you, if you have a show and you, you said, you know, your equipment, whatever, it's not perfect. It's not this. But what are you going to focus on that's going to make you do the show anyway? The good. Yeah. And some people see that as happy-go-lucky. And one thing I also learned, and, and that's a question I maybe want to ask you. When you have an attitude of if you try and be positive or if, if you have an optimistic outlook, I never understood why that is so irritating to some people. The, the fact that you won't give up or the fact that you refuse to look at this bad side or the fact that you refuse to focus on the bad or dwell on what went wrong. What, what do you think it is that makes some people, why does that push some people in the, touch some people in the wrong way? Well, she always got a smile on her face. So he always looking like this. And he, you don't know what that person went through to get to the point to where they smiling. And you don't know that that smile might be the only thing that's helping that person hold on. And I never understood why some people don't like to see other people smile or, or being positive or happy. 
I never got that. I, it doesn't bother me, but I, it baffles me. Uh, we're in the same boat because I don't have an answer for you because I've been asking that question all my life as well because mm -hmm. I grew up around my grandparents. And um, like you say, the good and bad. My daddy abused me and that bad led to the good of my grandparents then covering me mm -hmm. for the rest of their lives, you know. Mm -hmm. And so had they not been there for that covering, I wouldn't be the person I am today. That was an unconditional love that they had that I have yet to see from anybody else. And so right. all of the bad that happened to me as a child was then overbearingly high with the good of them till I didn't even know about the bad until I became a teenager. Being with them, I got to see things optimistically, you know, so right. being with my grandmother, grandfather, they they believed in just keep going, you know, no matter mm -hmm. what happened to you, keep going, which is right. the same thing as don't quit, you know? Right. And so, yeah, I, I I wouldn't be here today. And that's why I don't understand that. And I can't help you with that answer. And you let this never, interview be proof that I'm not only a comedian, I'm also a therapist. Yes, we are. <laughs> All comics are therapists because we see things comically, truthfully, and hurtfully. <laughs> because <laughs> we experience it all. <laughs> it's something that it's just built into people or how they grew up, you know? Some people right. are not happy with other people's happiness. Some people just want to be the only ones making it, the only ones doing <laughs> good. And no, that's not reality. So yeah, those are some good ones. Don't quit and there's good in everything. There's good in the bad, even though you think it's not. Yeah, those are two good ones to live by. So yeah, I want to thank you for being here today, Charles, and uh, let the people know again where they can hear you on Earthquake Show. Oh yeah, Quake's House, um, Sirius XM, uh, Kevin Hart, Laugh Out Loud Network, Sirius XM Channel 96. Um, it's Tuesdays at 1 p.m. That's uh, West Coast time, so that's Pacific. Um, it's, it's recurring, it reruns. And then if you're watching uh, Family Time on Bounce TV or In The Cut, just support Bounce TV, the, the, the only, the first and only completely black owned and run production TV network. Uh, for us, by us, support Bounce TV. Um, you can follow me at Charles Allen 79. I'm on all platforms. Anybody's welcome. And um, shout out to again to Hold Your Weight, um, another uh, black business owner, one of the brothers out here in Hollywood, personal trainer. He has his own clothing line, Crack and Taco. Any black business, support my sister Patricia Tone. She's doing her thing. And uh, y'all you. keep your spirits up. And I'm going to say it again. Yes. I'm going to get up in the camera. Do it. Just do it. Yes. Like Nike say, yes. just do it. Shout out to just Bentley Kyle it. Evans. Omar yes. Gittins, um, and Stacey Evans. Cracking Taco. I mean, I'm just, it's so many, like, sleepers for billionaires. All these up and coming uh, black business owners. You ain't just got to be black. Yeah. But I'm going to shout out my people first. But uh, any yeah. business owner, like everybody that's doing that thing, all the single mothers, like, and I, we, we understand what y'all doing. Keep doing what you're doing. And if you're looking for a bad word or if you're looking for somebody that's going to look at something and flip it in a bad way, don't look over here because I ain't got nothing to tell you nothing bad. So, oh, well, that's just what it is. I appreciate you having me on the show. And uh, I'll do it anytime. Let me know when you want to do it again. All right, sir. Thank you, Charles. Bye-bye. And thank you, Charles, for being here today. I really appreciate your time. What a wonderful, wonderful conversation we had. And thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, 
comment, and hit that subscribe button. Once again, thank you for watching Ask on Tricia. I'm Patricia Tone. I'll see you next time.